All right, good morning, everybody. So like I said, just before we I pressed record, I'm going to introduce a banking workshop that will be coming up soon. And the agenda today is simply preparation for that workshop. And I will give everybody slides that you will see in the workshop. So first off, we'll have a discussion about what the banking workshop is, so it'll be simple. Uh, then a discussion about how a bank works, and that's where some there'll be some new vocabulary introduced. And then one of my favorite discussions, discuss banks around the world. And we talk about public trust because we have people from all over the world here in this class who've had very different experiences interacting with the banking system. And then I give you a little bit of a history lesson talking about how uh, there was a time when most Americans did not trust banks and government had to build back that trust. And what I've chosen as my background, you can see a stamp. It says 1933 Federal Deposit Insurance Company. That's F FDIC is the acronym that was created uh, for Americans to start trusting banks when there was a period that Americans had good reason not to trust banks. So that's after, after I introduce that, we'll have our 10 minute break. Then we'll go into the uh, FDIC program and how it works, why people today around the world oftentimes go out of their way to get a US bank account when they cannot trust banks in other places. And then I will show you the slides for the workshop. And you can practice teaching each other these slides in breakout rooms. That is the plan for today. Any questions? No questions, let's keep it. Oh, Lunique, did you have a question? Oh, no questions, I'll keep it moving. Here we go. All right, so uh, the uh, banking workshop. If you go onto our Google Classroom page, you'll notice that I posted several slides and you can access them anytime you want. Okay, here they are. Right in the stream, I said, hi everyone. We'll take, we'll have a special workshop hosted by uh, First National Bank soon. Here are the slides that they will use in their presentation. Take some time and get familiar with the vocabulary. So um, once again, the people who host the workshop, they're not educators. So very often they're, uh, we'll just, oh, the people who you listen to are not really uh, presenting it the way we present it. They're just reading off of the slides. So I like to give everybody the slides ahead of time so that you can take a look at the concepts before the workshop itself. So it's kind of, a, it's a DIY, do it yourself vocabulary. They introduce concepts like financial empowerment, financial goals, and you can look at their entire presentation before they give it. And that way uh, you'll get a lot more out of it. Even if you're not the least bit interested in uh, banking, it's still worthwhile. So that's what the banking workshop will be. It's great. It's like listening to a, it's like listening to a speech. You, it's like reading a speech before hearing it. So you can look at everything they'll tell you. That's what I'm going to set everybody up, up for today. So to begin, I'm going to show you this image. All right. Uh, this is a stock photo I just took off the internet and I put a, an activator question right here. People are standing in line. And now I'd like a volunteer to tell me why they are standing in line. Take a minute, process it. Look, it could be a street in any American city. 
Maybe they want to get cash from ATM machine or send Western Union. That's, transfer. There we go. So there's an observation. ATM, they might be sending money somewhere else. Very good. Yeah. So there's also the small sign say ATM. The small sign says Western Union to transfer money. Most of you probably use Zelle or World Remit or some or Venmo. But what's that right and there? Teacher, mm -hmm. teacher, because the, the COVID-19 to, and to respect the social distance, the banks ask, uh, don't want uh, too many people to uh, get in. That's an observation. So we're, it's definitely contemporary. You see masks on faces. Um, is this a bank that they're lining up at? Is it a bank? Uh, no, it's not a bank. Maybe, maybe, um... maybe they don't have account in some bank. Who is that? Oh, Shalmadar, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. So I'm not sure who that was. Was that uh, Daniel a minute ago who said it's not a bank? Yeah, they don't have an account. Exactly. So they, that's, that's the answer to the question. They're standing in line here because they have no bank account. When you have no bank account, and you get a check from your job or anywhere else. We're still uh, one of the few countries that still uses old fashioned paper checks. A lot of parts of the world have gone cashless these days. But in America, jobs will still issue you a check. If you special, and if you don't have a bank account, you're walking around with that piece of paper that you can't spend, you need to feed your family. So these places are called, who knows what these places are called? They're not banks, they're, they're, there's a name for them. They're called check cashing places. And you see right here a sign, open 24 hours, check cashing. So, uh, Next question. They are all standing here because they don't have bank accounts. Which one is better to, ca to put your, to cash your check at a check cashing place or to use a bank? Which one's better? Use a bank. Absolutely, Yana, why? Because you can uh, use an application also, send money, like every, every second you can use it. And well, convenience. It's more reliable, no? or, okay, yeah. convenience, reliability. There's another mm -hmm. big reason why. It's really not good. It's safer. Uh, safety? No, no, not necessarily. The teacher, um, the bank account is better because you have to build a relationship with the bank to build your credit and can help you too to save money to uh credit that will actually be the next workshop so gene you are thinking you're absolutely right but you're thinking like ahead to to the second workshop there's a workshop there's a separate workshop on credit after the banking workshop so gene you're living in the future so people will go to a check cashing place if they don't have a bank account but it's definitely better to go to a bank Yana was giving a few possible reasons, but there's a much bigger reason that you definitely want to avoid a check cashing place. Not and, and, <clears throat> sorry. Yeah, go for it, Isabel, go for it. And, and you can get money uh, for any time. Well, I'll give you a hint. Well, actually, no, um, the, the 20, these places are open 24 hours. So mm -hmm. it, that, they mm -hmm. actually stay open on purpose. If you cash a check at a check cashing place, how much of your money can you get? All of it? You have to pay percent? 
Yes, mm -hmm. beautiful, exactly. So check cashing places will charge you a fee mm -hmm. and it's a percentage of your check. So if you cash a check for a hundred dollars, uh, you'll pay a percentage. If you cash a check for a thousand dollars, you'll pay a percentage. And imagine if you do that every time you get paid, you're throwing money away. You're paying places like this money for nothing. So it's much better to have a bank account. But for so many people, uh, bank accounts are not easy to come by. And check cashing places uh, ex make a lot of money off of this community. People who have just arrived in this country who quite likely don't have the tax ID number, social security number to open up a bank account and are not sure, or perhaps have had bad experiences with banks and have reason not to trust them. So next question, how does a bank make money? If I go into, well, I'll, let me go back to that last slide. If I go to a check cashing place, I know exactly how they make money. They take my money. But if I go to a bank and I deposit a check for a hundred dollars, that hundred dollars is mine. Or if I cash a check for a hundred dollars, they'll give me a hundred dollars. So how does a bank actually make money if all my money is mine? I'm not paying them to cash the check. How does a bank make money? Take a minute and think about this. Many of you know the answer, but using the English is gonna be a little tricky. So that's what today is all about. And I gave you a chart to, uh, to make it easy. Take a moment, try to answer this question. How does a bank make money? If they're not pay, if I'm not paying them to cash a check, how do they make money? Take a moment. Teacher, this question is about the production. No, nope, the question is how does a bank make money? Mm. They I, use yeah. our money which we put to our bank account, saving account, they use it. They do the use account. it. Yeah. How, they do use it. Um, Jana, what's the, this word? I know it's a little blurry. Uh, let me actually change the resolution here to make it easier. There's not a high enough resolution on my image. Whoop. Okay. So I'm going to make this a little smaller. I should have chosen a higher resolution image. So Jana says they use it. They use our money. Yes. How do they use our money? I've underlined a word right here. Um, yes, the interest with the interest of survey of Ash people teacher. Mm -hmm. So they make money with interest from our money. I teacher. Mm -hmm. When they make the, when they give the loan, and on um, and they charge fee some for some uh, 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 transaction and. Uh, Exactly, exactly. So what Jean said follows what Yana said perfectly. So Yana says, and uh, Yana and I think that was Shalmara said, they can make money with interest from our money. And Jean said, they will charge interest when they give somebody a loan. Um, so Jean, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use a, I'm going to use kind of an, an, make an analogy. Um, let's say Yana, you deposit, Yana will deposit, uh, let's just say a thousand dollars into this bank. Yana puts her money into the bank and what happens next? Does it, is, is the money locked up behind a big steel wall? guarded safely or does that money go somewhere i think teacher when you deposit your money for uh, for example six months the bank can um are many business with your money for yes this month yeah so the way to understand it 
is this. Your money can be two places at once. As I understand, if you put mm -hmm. your money to saving accounts, they can use it and give you a small interest, but it's very, mm -hmm. very, very small, like 0. That's 0.001. Right. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Um, Yana, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you exactly how that works. Mm -hmm. So here we go. So Yana, you put $1,000 into this. Well, let, let's say it's not $10,000. let us let us say it's $10,000, okay? Mm -hmm. So let's say Yana has $10,000 to put into the bank. And she wants to make some interest. All right. So she opens up a savings account or even something that will gain more interest, like a CD, certificate of deposit. She says she won't. That's a that's a contract with the bank. Here is a thousand dollars. I will let you have it until I want it again in a year or two years. And you can do what you want with it. And that's the contract you sign with the bank. So Yana will put her money here. How will the bank use this to make money? The bank will make money in this way. It'll be not only two places at once, it'll be many places at once. So, uh, Gene, would you like to buy a new car? Yes. <laughs> okay, so Gene, you are going to apply for a car loan for $10,000. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, let's say, well, actually, here we go. I'm going to say it's $5,000. <clears> so Gene is going to apply for a car loan for $5,000. They look at his credit history. He pays his bills on time. So they say, yes, Gene, we have your credit history. Here's $5,000. Where did that $5,000 come from? Yana. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> now, yes. Uh, let's say, Isabel, you want to fix the roof on your house. And you need $5,000. It's raining. So mm -hmm. you go to the bank. The bank says, your credit is good as well. So... You will, uh, so uh, here's $5,000. How's the bank gonna make money? They just, they take Yana's money, say here's some for Jean and here's some for Isabel. How does the bank make money? Um, here's the word. Interest, they get interest, like commission. Church. Yes, exactly. Luni, tell us how they how they get interest. It charges uh, uh, the customer. Yeah, the customer, and yes. uh, get some interest. Deposit. Exactly, exactly. So let's say, uh, uh, Jean, your loan is for I don't know. You say I'll pay this loan back in four years. The faster you pay it back, the less you have to pay. But if you pay back. This loan in two years, four years, whatever it is, each time you pay, you pay a little bit more. Maybe it's, uh, and this is when uh, interest rates matter. Um, interest rates that banks give are determined by um, the, federal, uh, the federal government. Right now, interest rates are high. So, these days, uh, a good interest rate will be like, oh, four point something. I don't know what it's like. Let's just say you got 4.2. This is much higher than it was last year. Um, four months ago, a decent interest rate would be 3.5. Um, actually, it's not, it's higher than that now. Let's say it's 4.5. So 4.5%. Let's say, Isabel, you're going to pay off this, uh, this loan to fix your roof in um, how fast do you want to pay off the loan, Isabel? You want to pay it off in one year, two years, three years, a week, I don't know. <laughs> 5,000, I think, in two years. Two years, okay. Yeah. So here we go. So let's... 
Let's do some math. Okay. $5,000. $5,000 divided by two years, you're going to pay every month. So that will be 24. 24. Mm -hmm. 24. All right. So what are you going to pay every month? I'm just pulling out my calculator. Mm -hmm. So if anybody's can do this faster, anyone's really good at math, you can figure this out before me. I'm just pulling out the calculator here on my phone. Where is it? Oh, wait. My wife is an accountant, so it's a big calculator. Here we go. All right. So five zero 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 divided by 24. Okay, so that's going to be two hundred and eight point three dollars. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. that's what you'll owe each month, but there's more. Two hundred and eight point three 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 three. Probably round up to four times four point five. So let's say times five times point five. I'm sorry. Times you're gonna, if we do the math right here, Isabel will be paying 4.5% uh, interest. So what is 4.5% interest? Okay, so that's 045 about 0 0.045, 0 0.045. So roughly, I'm probably not exact on this. Ben is the math teacher. He would do this better. Yeah, okay. So it's going to be another 9 to $10 each month. So let's just add. So each month, you're going to be paying them another $10. You're going to be giving them back what they owe you, and you're going to be paying about $18. Uh, a smart way to pay it off would just be pay more, lower that interest rate, and pay $220 a month or $230 a month, pay it off a little faster, lower that interest. So that is how the bank will make money. Each month, Isabel is going to is giving the bank $10, $10, $10. She's paying back the money again. Gene will be doing the same thing. If Gene pays off the car loan in two years, it'll be exactly the same amount he pays back. If it pays off in four years, it'll take it longer because each month he has to give them the interest, the interest again and again. And the bank is doing okay. So for holding, for giving away money, giving away Yana's money, after two years, the bank will have made $240 from Isabel's interest. The bank will have made the same from Jean's interest. And if the bank has thousands of clients, the bank is doing okay. And then when Yana wants to get her money back with interest, she can receive a part of that interest as well. So that is how banks work. Money can be many, many, many places at once. Now, for, in order for this to happen, people have to trust the bank. In this country, we take this for granted. Um, Isabel, if you put money in the bank, do you trust that the money is going to be there when you want it? Whoops. Trust. Trust. Yeah, do you trust that the bank will keep it safe? That when you look at your bank account, the right number is there? I think that depends on total. Tell us, Daniel, do you trust a bank yeah. when you put money in the bank the total of you want okay by example for example if i put a uh, one million one million bank and if i need the uh, one million uh uh presently mm -hmm. it to me 
because uh, they can go to work. Uh, they they gonna um, how can I say that? They gonna uh, let the money work. Yes, that's exactly what banks will say. Let your money work for you. Yeah. So, in your experience, Daniel, do you trust that a bank will follow? Will do what they say they will do. Do you, when you put money in the bank, do you believe that this money is safe, or do you believe your money will disappear? What if uh, one one day the bank is closed? The money money the is gone. The money is safe. You believe your money is safe? Yes. Let's hear from everybody. Lunique, in yeah. your experience, do you trust uh, banks when you put money in the bank? Yes, I I trust. Okay. Uh, because in the bank, uh, the money has more security, but uh, the problem is... Uh, uh, if the bank uh, make a bank 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 yes, uh, my money, I lost my money. Mm -hmm. Now, quick question: Do you uh, keep a bank account? Uh, do you trust banks in Haiti as well as the United States? The same? Hmm. The same. Okay. I think. This this them. Okay, this them. so we have trust, I, trust in both countries. Yep. All right. Uh, let's ask everybody. Do you trust, in your experience, do you trust banks where you are from, in the U.S., in other places? Uh, um, I did, I never have a uh, problem with the, my bank account in Haiti. Okay. Uh, I, I trust it. I trust. All right. Uh, Shalmara, how about you? Uh, yeah, I have a account in this mm. country and I trust the in, the, in this bank. Okay. Very good. Very good. All right. Uh, anyone, does everybody trust banks yeah. in all of their experiences? Anyone else? Because I want to say, we have different yeah. experiences. I trust in, in my a bank in my country and here I have account in Bank of America and I always save the receipt because it's my confirmation tool. Mm. Okay, so what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to uh, I'm going to skip the next slide and I'm going to show you a uh, short video about what America was like when people stopped trusting uh, banks. This is a series from the History Channel about the Great Depression. And it was a period of time when uh, Americans did not trust banks because uh, many banks were disappearing. Um, banks were investing money and not being truthful about how the money was invested. And when banks were losing money, the banks would just close. And there was no law protecting uh, the customer. There was no, cons the, the concept of cons was called consumer advocacy uh, really was not, did not exist the way it does today. So one after the other, banks around America were closing and people were losing everything. Wow. And it took, it took a lot for Americans to start trusting banks again. Okay. Um, you can, uh, you can compare it to a lot of people who, um, well, I'm not going to start naming situations around the world, but here's the story. America boomed, but now it's bust. The Great Depression explodes across America. Social upheaval, poverty, drought. It 
it's time for America to fight back. The American spirit is forged in the fires of the Great Depression. Oh, I just realized I should probably stop recording because this is copywritten. I'll pause the recording. Nidia also stopped. He yeah. said, Stop the video, teacher. Hello? The video is stopped. Uh, Did everybody hear that? Was there an issue? The video is not working. It's not working. Uh, uh, teacher. Okay, hang on one moment. One moment. Okay. Oh, I paused the screen share. I'm sorry. Hang on one second. All right, everybody. So one guy tries to get money out of the bank. A lot more people come to get their money out of the bank. Knowing what we know about how banks work, what happens if everybody at the same time let's go back to the mob of people there we go that's where's that I'm trying to find that there it is the scene of all those people there we go so what will happen if every single person wants to get their money out of the bank at exactly the same time one crud a lot of problems. So let's go back to the same analogy we had. Yana puts her money in the bank. Bank loans it out to uh, Jean, collects interest. The bank loans it out to Isabel and collects interest. And then we'll give it back to Yana later. So if Yana comes to get her money tomorrow, where is the money? Is it in the bank? Bankruptcy. Bankruptcy. No. No. Um, I see a lot of people, I hear a lot of people looking up the word bankruptcy. This is a little bit of a different concept. Um, why doesn't the bank have Yana's money? She put her money in the bank. Why isn't it there? Because the bank gave this money to Jean and Isabel. Mm -hmm. Exactly, Olha. Yes, that's how banks work. So, the your money is not physically in the bank at the same time. The physical money they have small reserves of cash on hand. This is something that if anybody ever wants to, if you're ever thinking of robbing a bank, this is a good concept to understand. There's not all the bank's money is never in one physical location. It's everywhere. <laughs> The bank makes money by sending your money in different places. <clears throat> so if every single person comes to the bank to get their money, there's no money to get. Is the reason uh, they think, is the reason they give you uh, a, a credit card? Because your money, your money is not here physically, but you, if they give you a credit card, you can do what you, what, what you want with it. Well, credits are a different concept. Credit cards are a different concept. Credit also uses interest, um, but it's a, what, what credit is, it's what credit is, it, is it's borrowing from the future. Uh, credit cards, uh, they're much newer concepts. Um, in this context, in the 19, in uh, 1929, 1930, when uh, Americans were losing trust in banks, uh, there was no such thing as a credit card. Okay. Um, but the, uh, the the concept of a credit card that that's a much newer 
um, concept. But the idea that banks could move money around, make money with your money by moving it around, that's a very old concept. But if everybody tries to take their money out of the bank at the same time, what will happen? Bank can be become bankrupt? Well, who knows what bankruptcy is? The bank teacher uh, uh, doesn't have enough cash to, to give anyone. Exactly, exactly. So uh, bankruptcy is slightly different. Bankruptcy is applying for loan forgiveness from the government. There is, uh, who said they won't have enough cash to give everyone? Was that Jean? Teacher, yes. That You're absolutely right, Jean. So yes, because a bank will only have a certain amount of cash in one place at a certain time, if everybody who uh, who is a client of that bank tries to take their money out at once, the bank will ha not have the cash. They just won't have it. It's not there. They'll say, sorry. In this time, the, the bank give uh, the appointment to everyone? <laughs> they'll, they'll do whatever they can. They'll say, please come back tomorrow. So uh, guess what, what has started to happen? All over America, people were trying to take their money out of the bank. They said, oh, we don't trust these places. So what happens if every city in America, you have mobs of people trying to get their money out of the bank at the same time? Because they don't trust it anymore. The banks disappeared. Bye-bye. And all those people who didn't get their money out, sorry. Nothing we could do for you. So this is what America looked like. This is the day worry turns to panic. Would the banks go the same way as the stock market? Hysteria spreads like wildfire. Two million dollars are withdrawn from this branch alone. Even though all the anxious depositors who asked for their money before closing time were given it, the crowd became restless. A squad of police were sent in to control them. The trouble spreads to other branches. By the next morning, the Bank of United States has collapsed. confidence in U.S. banks disintegrates. In the last 60 days of 1930, 600 banks shut. Banks close in wave after wave across the country. By 1933, there are 28 states without a single bank open. Unlike today, the federal government does not bail out the banks. Unemployment goes from 4 million in 1930 to 12 million in 1932. Every day, a thousand homes are repaired. So there's a, there's a commercial, but uh, why is that happening? Why is one bank closing? Another bank is closing. Another bank is closing. Another bank is closing. I'll play this part again. Confidence in U.S. banks dis disintegrate. I'll read the line there. Banks close in wave after wave across the country. And the administration of uh, money. Is that again, Doris? Bad administration. Uh, mm -hmm. to when wave across the country. You, um, yes. <laughs> Bad administration. Oh, well, yeah. why is this happening? One bank closes another. Another bank closes, another bank closes, another bank closes. There's some, there's some problem. Like today, the because federal government bad, does not know. bail out the banks. Mm -hmm. Tell us, Daniel. Yeah, I think it's, there's some problem. Everybody wants his money. Yeah, everybody came to get their money at the same time. Everybody stopped trusting the banks, and they came to get their cash. Unemployment goes from 4 million in 1930 to 12 million in 1932. Every day, a thousand homes are repossessed. 
$200,000. So all of a sudden, when banks started closing, unemployment <clears throat> goes from in 1930 to 12 million in 19. That's bad. Unemployment goes from 4 million to 12 million. <clears throat> Every day, a thousand homes are <clears throat> homes are repossessed. In 1930 to 12 million in 1932. Every day, a thousand homes are repossessed. 200,000 vagrant children wander the country. 34 million Americans have no source of income. So all of a sudden, uh, all of a sudden we have a ripple effect. Banks are closing and this will lead to uh, unemployment and mass homelessness and poverty. Now, What was the reason that people stopped trusting banks? The reason is uh, this, the uh, stock market. There was a drop in uh, stock market collapsed. A lot of companies were falsely reporting what they were making, so stocks lost a lot of money. Most Americans did not own stocks. So theoretically, that wouldn't matter if the stock market crashed, but it was banks, banks were investing other people's money in stocks. So when banks started to lose their money, people started coming to get their cash because they didn't trust the banks anymore. And gradually, when people started coming to get their cash, the banks had no cash to give. Banks would close and that was it. Americans lost, lost their money. <clears throat> so um, this was an activator question and I'm gonna change it. I'm going to, uh, we have exactly, let's see, five minutes. I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna write a question right here. What did it, what had to change in order for Americans to trust banks again? So take a minute, everybody. What had to change in order for Americans to trust banks again? Super the government uh, had the responsibility uh, to guarantee uh, the, mm. the, the, the customers. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, is a bank the government or is a bank a private business? It's a private. It is a private business. What does everybody think about a situation like this? <clears throat> Should governments make rules for banks? The Is way there must unique? be a law, uh, mm -hmm. a law that uh, will guarantee uh, to return amount of money to people if the bank will close. Okay, so Olha, you, what you're saying is very close to what Lunika is saying. Olha said there must be a law created so that people don't lose everything. Banks have to return the money. If the bank, if the banks lose everything, they have to give people back their money. Create I, a law. Okay. Teacher, uh, mm -hmm. I think many of the new laws. Laws. Mm -hmm. Keep going, Isabel. You said, I think many of the new laws, what? Uh, the, or oh, I can say in English. Okay, it's all right. Take your time. Everybody take your time. Anybody else, what 
had to change in order for Americans to trust banks again. Teacher, I mm -hmm. think um, on a 2000, 2008, mm -hmm. when it had a recession, mm -hmm. there was a bad, a bad time mm -hmm. for the American people. Everybody, and because, yeah. Yeah, the, the, that situation, and even uh, I, I uh, remember in negative on time, there was a bad information that the bank will change any, any exchange money to to the Haitian money. Anyone mm. has a, 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 a American dollar or all the other uh, uh, exchange money in the bank went to the bank to, to ask the money. Uh, so everybody, bad, everybody was afraid of keeping dollars? Yeah, but yes. Interesting. Bad, yes, interesting. Very interesting. A bad situation, bad information. And for example, now, now the, uh, we talk again about the recession. It, it's a yeah. bad, it's bad information. That's kind of funny because I'm thinking right now, I, I remember that the dollar was pretty low then. Um, the uh, right now the dollar is very very high. A lot. <laughs> yeah. These, these, days, these days, every if any of you are sending money back home, you're in a great situation because <laughs> the dollar is higher, almost higher than the is matched with the pound right now. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. There, yeah. Uh, let's see. Oh, it's eleven o'clock. So we'll finish this question when we come back. We might even uh, go into breakout rooms to discuss. So. Across America, Americans stopped trusting banks. Banks closed. What had to happen in order for Americans to start trusting banks again? We know something did happen. What exactly was it? Think about it, and we will uh, finish when we come back in 10 minutes. Everybody, take a break. Here we go, 10 minutes. All right, grab a cup of coffee, do what you need to do. <clears throat> so what I'm gonna do right now is I'm going to take some of these slides. I'm going to put you into breakout rooms and you can practice teaching each other some of these slides. Uh, so here's slide number eight. What is financial empowerment? how money is earned, spent, and saved. I'll put this in the WhatsApp group because uh, that'll make it easier. So the first one will be slide number eight. Actually, no, let's do slide number 13, services provided by the bank. Slide number 14 and slide number... Actually, you can all choose. How about this? We'll do groups of two and you can choose which slide you want. That'll be more fun. Okay. Here we go. Okay, everyone. Here is the slideshow from the First National Bank. In small groups, choose a slide to study and teach to the rest of the class. All right. So here we go. And you can see it on your uh, WhatsApp group. All right. Okay. 
And I can put you into small groups right now. Here we go. How about who would like to take number slide number 13? Anybody? I can take. Okay, slide 13. Was that Yana? Mm -hmm. Yana and um, anybody else want to join Yana? Let's say Yana and uh, Daniel. Yana and Daniel, slide 13. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> slide 14. Who wants to take 14? I can take. Okay, all, Olha. And Olha. I want to use Olha. Olha and Svetlana. All right. Slide fifteen. The requirements to open up a bank account. Um, Jean Shamara, Doris Lunique, yes. Isabel. Sure. Okay, Doris. Yes. I mean, no problem, I mean, teacher. You got no. Doris and Isabel. Slide 15. Uh, so we got Shamara, Lunique, and Allison. How about we just do the Shamara, Lunique, and Allison for slide 16? Okay. Shamara, Lunique, okay. and Allison can all take slide 16 together. Well, actually, not slide 16. Okay. That's not a very interesting slide. Uh, Oh, let's do slide 19. Needs versus wants. 19. 19. So Mara, um, Allison, and... 16 or 19, teacher? Uh, 19, 19. I just okay. realized there was almost nothing on slide 16. <laughs> and Lunique. Okay. All right. So I'll put you into breakout rooms together. You can discuss these, uh, your individual slide. And then at the end of class, we come back and you can teach it to, to each other. Like a mini presentation. Here we go. Okay. Recreate. That'll be four breakout rooms. All right. Room one. Yana and Daniel. Room two, Olha and Svetlana. Room three, Doris and Isabel. Oh, I didn't, uh, Allison, you can join Doris and Isabel, okay? Okay. I realized I left you out, okay. And then, um, Room four, Jean, Lunique, and Shalmara. Sorry, I didn't see you on the <laughs> there at first. I didn't forget about you, Allison. <laughs> okay, and now you can join your breakout rooms.
Sure, sure, sure. Mm -hmm. I'm doing some data out of there. Sorry. Oh, yeah, shit. All right, let me zoom out. Hey, Yana and Daniel. Yeah, hello, hello. Hello. So hello. A bit yeah. I, I will mute. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, everybody.
So we can start with Yana and Daniel. You don't have to, don't, don't, uh, one thing I forgot to mention, don't just read the words because uh, that's boring. Just summarize it in your own words. What does this mean, Yana and Daniel? The services provided by a bank. It's mean like uh, these options, which you can get if you put money to bank, like it's very easy to use money. You can transfer, you can uh, pay, and uh, you can do everything, yeah. To put, like good. transfer money from checking to saving account, from mm -hmm. checking to credit account. Mm -hmm. Yeah, pretty good. Anything to add, Daniel? Yeah, but you can you can lend your money. Uh, uh, you can lend to uh, money for pay college, buy buy a car, a mm -hmm. home. A, a, a start a business, everything. Mm. A variety everything. of things. So, so banks are, sound, sounds like banks are important. Okay. All right. So, Olha and Svetlana, give us, uh, it, and again, you don't, don't read the words, just give us your own interpretation. Um, <clears throat> what are some of the reasons to open a bank account? I start. Go mm -hmm. for it. Uh, because it's very comfortable, uh, you can pay your bills so anytime you want. Um, mm -hmm. You can uh, track your uh, expenses. Uh, you can mm -hmm. uh, get a loan in this bank if you have their account. Um, you can get uh, interest if you save money on deposit account. Mm. That's all. Pretty good. All right. And uh, let's go to slide 15. <clears throat> so Doris and Isabel and uh, or Allison, does it, you don't all have to say it. At the, uh, you can just, any one of you, tell us a few of the things you need to open a bank account. Yeah. We think it's simple because you only need your uh, photo ID. Mm -hmm. uh, have a physical um, address 18, mm -hmm. 18 years old and in one day you can get your account with the documents mm -hmm. a physical address social security and id mm -hmm. well you said easy mm -hmm. Are all of these things easy for everybody no because some, some oh. people don't have a social security but <laughs> yeah. is it not in no in have a little uh bank you don't need you, you have social security number only your passport yes that's why i open my account you do need a number you either need a tax id number or a social in some countries you can just open it with a passport it's a little harder in the u.s um, last last slide and it's 12 o'clock time to finish uh, slide 19 here it is what is the difference between a need and a want in a few words uh, either Allison I'm sorry either yes Allison uh, Doris or Isabel or Shamara Lunique I'm sorry yeah. <laughs> anybody, whoever, <laughs> we just finish. Anybody, I don't care. <laughs> okay. Finish with us. Need is, uh, for example, we need to food for survive. Mm -hmm. And what is, for example, I want a car, but I don't have the money. And I don't have to buy in this moment. I want, mm -hmm. I need a plane, a plane for buy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's right. So. <laughs> Good. Yeah, Lunique, what, what were you thinking? I think first uh, you have a, a job mm -hmm. and I uh, have uh, a plan for, for the future. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and uh, I, uh, invest your money. Mm -hmm. Uh, in in the in a good investment, 
and uh, mm-hmm. and buy buy uh, buy a house. Well, that's more like long-term dreams, hopes and dreams. These are needs and wants. So needs are basic survival. Wants are things that you can live without. This is what you can't really live without. This is what you can live without. So setting those, for a lot of people, they want to buy a house, they want to buy the car, they want that great life, but they have to live, they have to figure out how to survive till next week. So needs and wants. Um, Anyway, that's it. (laughs) We're done for today. So uh, tomorrow, I didn't announce this earlier, but uh, tomorrow you will have a teacher who some of you know very well and some of you may have not have met yet. Michael, who lives in Thailand. Uh, He will be back. He will be back and he'll be teaching class tomorrow. And I hope you enjoy it. And I'll be able to pick up where I left off. So that's it. I will see you uh, Wednesday. All right. Bye-bye, everybody. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.